I was on the phone the other day with my friend, the artist Pat Witt. She told me there was a show in Millville of paintings by Frederick James Gill. I had never heard of him, but when Pat mentioned the word fiance, I figured this is something I gotta look into. Could this be a love story? I stopped at the barn to find out. In 1965, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Morris Blackburn introduced Pat to Frederick. Pat became friends with Frederick and his wife, Nancy. In 1967, Pat was running the Ocean City Cultural Arts Center and hired Frederick to teach painting. After Frederick's wife died, the friendship between him and Pat continued. They went on painting trips together, and at one point... He said, I want to ask you something. Would you consider marrying me? I said, no. So he still gave me a diamond ring. And I said, can we be engaged not to get married? <laughs> and so we agreed on that too. But we had often talked about going to Taos, New Mexico and getting married there. However, it worked out better. I still had my freedom here and he had his freedom there. It worked out, but we were very close friends, enjoyed one another's conversations, and he was just a very special person. Our friendship was a perfect blendship. Frederick James Gill was born in Philadelphia in 1906. In 1929, he earned his BFA from the Philadelphia Museum School of Industrial Art, now known as University of the Arts. In 1930, he began teaching art at Central High School. He got his MFA from Tyler School of Art in 1953. He ended up teaching at many prestigious local art colleges, including Tyler. He exhibited at places like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the American Academy of Arts and Letters, and the Butler Institute of American Art. He was a sought after portrait painter and many of his portraits are at Temple University's School of Pharmacy. But eventually, he decided to switch to abstraction. In the gallery, you're gonna see this beautiful painting of Daniel, who was a model that posed for him. Then all of a sudden, his sons, James and Frederick Jr., they were about maybe seven and eight years old and they would love to go in the studio when Frederick was painting. So he would put paper down on the floor and give them paint and all kinds of things. And he was looking at them. They were just having lots of fun letting the paint go and then they would dribble black paint in it and let it run all over. And he said, well, they were having such fun. I think I'm gonna start having fun like that. And that was his introduction to abstract art. I think it was just a wonderful a transition for him. It turns out Frederick was also an excellent jazz saxophonist, so the improvisational nature of abstract painting must have felt familiar to him. My name is Candace Fields and I co-curated the Frederick Gill Show with Gay Taylor. We discovered some cassette tapes. They're a little bit garbled but it was a great experience to be able to hear the artist play the saxophone and brought together that his creating work was dependent on music and the visual aspect of art together and how they blend. <laughs> Thank you. 
my name is Gayla Claire Taylor. I'm the co-curator of the exhibit of Frederick Gill, Jazz for All Seasons. I'm on the board of the barn and a student here and retired curator of the Museum of American Glass at Wheaton Arts, where I was curator for 37 years. So when Pat came up with the idea of selling the paintings, we decided that we would work on them, inventory them. We arranged the exhibit. We found several articles that Frederick Gill had done in his own words. Jazz and Painting, The Creative Twins by Frederick Gill. The Sunday Bulletin, February 27th, 1972. The self-drawing below is not so much a physical likeness as an attempt to express my feelings in a Saturday night gig with the combo. Having been addicted to jazz for most of my life, I have developed a Catholic taste, which includes everything from Dixieland through swing and bop to free jazz and jazz rock. I enjoy playing blues because of the improvisational freedom. And I also enjoy playing ballads, but with some personal changes, not exactly as written. What does all this have to do with painting? Well, most of my paintings are inspired by jazz and frequently have titles related to it. My greatest enjoyment in painting is abstract art. For just as in playing blues, there is both a basic structure and extemporaneous creation. Abstract art to me is the real reality, containing the elements of pure beauty. Space, line, color, texture. Elements to be found in nature when it is not contaminated by contact with the human race. Next to abstract art, I enjoy painting flowers in the improvised imaginative style. I avoid studying or sketching them first as I want the result to be emotional creation rather than imitation. Is this interest in flowers the ballad influence? I often do neo-expressionistic creations of jazz musicians and carousel horses. In fact, any subject I paint is apt to involve playing by ear rather than reading by the notes. As an independent artist, I do not consider myself part of a movement or school. I'm not a joiner and detest movements. So I feel free to create paintings in various personal styles as my mood dictates at the time. Occasionally, I even delve into a kind of worked over realism, barns, houses, if only for the discipline involved. These paintings usually begin by my seeing the subject repeatedly until I am impelled to sketch and study it and to make varied compositional sketches from which I work. My many years of teaching art have been fruitful as the problems of instructing others have forced me to think about art as well as to create it. Although I have cut my teaching down to a minimum, I shall not give it up entirely as I find it quite stimulating to my painting. Therefore, 
a true portrait of myself really should be an abstract or expressionist painting, a hi-fi set, a saxophone, and a small group of sincere students. What makes an artist or a jazz musician? I suppose that among other things we might list the satisfying of the ego, the desire for self-expression, a certain amount of defiance of the status quo, and the wish to communicate inner feelings and dreams to others of like sentience. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this show. I admit I came into this project because he was a boyfriend of Pat Witt's and I was curious. But then I went and saw his work. Fantastic.